at key locations such as transport hubs and city centres. There has also been an increase in the number of armed police and armed response vehicles being deployed across Scotland. Uh, police Scotland will keep all of these arrangements under review, as well as the arrangements for security at the various upcoming events that we know about over the next few days. These events range from the small daily events and celebrations that make up the very fabric of our society to large-scale football matches, marathons and VIP events. Police Scotland is looking very closely at every event and the security around them. This will include reviewing every single event due to take place over the next 14 days to ensure that a consistent and appropriate approach is taken across the country. For example, a full review of the Scottish Cup final will be taking place with the SFA to ensure that there is an appropriate deployment of police officers. This is in addition to the work that will be done to ensure public reassurance around the nighttime economy and crowded places more generally. I am being regularly briefed and updated on the police response and I am sure that the public will draw reassurance from the substantial uplift of visible policing on the streets. However, I would stress, as others have done and as it is important to do, that such measures are precautionary. My message to the public is that they should also remain vigilant and report any concerns they have to the police, but they should also go about their everyday business as normal. Siding officer, last night's attack was, as you and others have said, particularly cruel in its targeting of young people enjoying a pop concert, an event that many of them will be, have been looking forward to for months. That they should have been confronted with such horror is utterly heartbreaking. There will also be many other young people across the country uh, who will be seeing on the news and on social media the kind of images that we wish they never had to see. And many young people may feel particularly vulnerable at this time. So this is a time to ensure that we talk to our children at home, at school, and when we hear them talking amongst their friends. We have been in touch with Young Scott this morning, as well as with Education Scotland and local authorities to provide guidance and support to help with those conversations. Young Scott have issued the details of an information line which offers a safe space for any young person in Scotland to make contact and get information. They're also developing an online resource with key information and content to help meet young people's needs, emphasising the importance of respecting other people and their opinions, the emotional impact of this event and how to differentiate between accurate and false information. Presiding officer, we know that terrorists and extremists seek to divide us and destroy our way of life. As human beings, we cannot comprehend the twisted motivations that lead people to carry out such atrocities, particularly when they target children and young people in such a callous way. But our best response now and always is to stand firm together with de determination and solidarity, to make clear to those who seek to undermine our values, target our children and destroy our way of life that they will not succeed, not now and not ever. There are, presiding officer, many people today suffering pain and grief that we can scarcely imagine. And there are others who are still consumed by worry and uncertainty about their loved ones. Let us hold them firmly in our hearts today and in the many difficult days that lie ahead. Thank you, First Minister. I now call on Ruth Davidson. Thank you. Presenting officer, let me first associate myself and my party with every word of the First Minister's statement. We extend our deepest sympathy and condolences to all the families of those murdered last night. Our prayers, too, are with those who, as we speak, are being treated in hospital, many of them with injuries which are life-threatening. Today, the terrible personal cost of last night's outrage is becoming clear as the names of those who died begin to emerge. We know that many of those affected are young, children, teenagers and young people experiencing the thrill of a night out, a carefree evening ripped apart by terror. Leaving behind parents, family, friends, asking why someone that they don't know and with whom they have had no quarrel decided last night to target their daughter, their grandson, their sister. And we simply cannot imagine their pain today. Nor can we contemplate how someone could deliberately choose to target innocent children and young people. It feels beyond our simple comprehension. 
there are no words. But as the Prime Minister said earlier today, and as the First Minister has just articulated too, we must try to find them. We must repeat that we will not be beaten by the twisted ideology of terrorism. We must repeat that we will not ourselves descend into hatred or rage. We will repeat and repeat and repeat that we stand tall, we stand together, we respond to every act of terror that strikes our nation by shouting from the rooftops that our values, our freedoms, cannot and will not be diminished. Values shared by people of all religions in this country and of none. The values of tolerance, openness and respect for one another. The values of common humanity, of bravery and generosity, which saw hundreds of police, paramedics, doctors and nurses work through the night to respond to a situation that they could never have conceived of householders and taxi drivers opening their homes and offering lifts to help those affected. And let us all in this parliament extend our solidarity with the people of Manchester, who like the people of Paris, of London, of Brussels, of Nice, have responded with courage and decency in the face of cowardice and evil. Manchester will now be added to the grim roll call of those cities across Europe that have been affected by this terrorism. And like those other cities, it will first cry then grieve and then continue with spirit unbroken, showing that terrorism will never win. First Minister, we are informed today that the terrorist threat level across the UK remains at severe and can I ask what further reassurances you can give people that our exceptional police, defence and security personnel are doing all that they can to keep us safe? Thank you. First Minister. Well, can I thank Ruth Davidson uh, for uh, her comments? As I said earlier on, the uh, security threat level does remain at severe. It is, of course, uh, for the Joint Terrorism Analysis Centre, uh, JTAC, to assess the ongoing situation. Uh, however, Police Scotland uh, have already uh, confirmed to me that following this incident, they have reviewed security across Scotland to ensure that the right level of policing is in place to meet operational requirements and ensure public uh, reassurance. Uh, that security will be to an enhanced level. Uh, as I said in my statement, the police have significantly increased the number of firearms officers who are on uh, duty, uh, and there has been a proportionate increase in armed response vehicles and officers uh, on duty. Uh, as uh, members will understand, it is not appropriate to go into all of the detail of the deployment of police resources, uh, but I am assured that the police are taking all appropriate steps. Uh, and as I also said earlier on, they will uh, review security around all of the events that are upcoming in the days ahead. Uh, I will continue to liaise uh, closely with the Chief Constable and other uh, senior officers in Police Scotland in the days ahead to make sure that all appropriate steps are taken to keep the population of our country as safe as possible. Thank you. I call on Kezia Dugdale. They would have been dressed in pink in sparkles, bunny ears perched in their heads and grins on their faces. The very picture of innocence. The children who went to see American pop star and Disney TV actress Ariana Grande at the Manchester Arena last night would have been unable to contain their excitement. The atmosphere would have been electric. Every one of us has been there, been one of them, enthralled by the sound and vision of a pop star at their peak, desperate to see in the flesh the person whose image we've plastered on our bedroom walls. Being at a gig is a moment of sheer joy, but last night that joy was destroyed in a despicable act of cowardice. All that excitement, that innocent elation, turned to fear, to shock and to horror. Just hours after they arrived, children left that concert crying, screaming, utterly bewildered by what had just happened. Their ears ringing, not with the echo of pop music, but with the blast of a bomb. Today, those children will know that 22 of those who had shared the joy of that concert alongside them are dead, and that 59 people are in hospital with terrible injuries, and that too many parents are still desperately searching for the children who haven't come home. Those children too will know the phrase suicide bomber and the appalling reality of what that means. A story which they might have watched on Newsround, couched in age-appropriate language to soften the roughest of edges has brutally intruded into their young lives. For us as adults, hearing the news of terrorist atrocities, be they bombs or bullets or cars mowing people down in the street, is all too sadly now commonplace. We tend to cover our children's ears and eyes to protect them from the knowledge. And we hold them closer, all too aware of the fragility of their precious lives. 
But for those children and young people who witnessed last night's abominable act, there is no softening the blow, no making it better, no suggesting that these things don't happen here or to us or to people we know. They are now fully aware that when someone determines to kill others, when someone purposely straps a bomb to their body with a twisted plan to detonate it amongst innocent children, that there is nothing any one of us can do to prevent the horrific, inevitable outcome. And we cannot explain it to them. How can you tell an eight-year-old that there is a justifiable reason that children died last night? How can you explain the actions, the thought process, of someone who can look at a concert full of young people and see nothing but a target? But what we can do is respond well. We can teach our children that the only way to counter such barbarity is not with hate and with fear, but with compassion, tolerance, kindness and love. Like the people of Manchester did last night, flocking to help, taking people home, offering places to stay and searching for children who had become separated from their parents. Like those who work in our emergency services did, as they always do, running, unflinching, towards horror, rather than away from it, to offer comfort and care and rescue. No doubt over the coming days, we will discover the name of the coward who chose to kill excited children at a concert. And there will be attempts to understand why they did it. For those who are grieving, there will be no worthy answers. For those left traumatized, there will be no comprehension. Does the First Minister agree that what there will be though, is a toughening of our resolve in the face of terror? a renewal of our belief in the enduring British values of tolerance and respect, and a determination to make sure that such horrific acts will never undermine our freedom nor our democracy. Thank you. First Minister. Well, again, uh, can I thank Kezia Dugdale for uh, her comments? I think she has uh, described very powerfully and in a, a very poignant way the excitement that so many children and young people would have felt last night setting out uh, to a concert that for many of them would have been their first experience of such an event. And I don't think there'll be a single one of us uh, when we have been listening to the news of uh, these events today who will not have pictured a, a child or young person in our own lives. For me, it's my 10-year-old my niece herself, a, a massive fan of Ariana Grande, somebody who could have been at a concert like that last night. And it brings it home uh, so personally uh, to all of us. Uh, and the truth is, there is no way we can explain to young people how, uh, why uh, those uh, people died last night, because there is no justifiable reason for it. But we can help those young people to process and come to terms uh, with what happened. And that's why, as well as the duties that uh, the government has to work with the police to keep our population as safe as possible, as well as the duties we all have to support and give gratitude to our public services, we all have a responsibility in the days ahead to help not just those young people that were at that concert in Manchester last night, but those other young people who will have watched these scenes on their televisions today to understand